today on Business Intelligence, we talk to business professionals about what business they are in, the importance of understanding your industry and its requirements. Hello everyone and welcome to Business Intelligence. My name is Anthony Buffy and today we're going to be answering the question, what business are you in? As a budding entrepreneur, you probably have an idea of the product or the service you want to sell. You may probably have started your organization already and you may be growing. Whatever the case, you need to know what business you are in. So when we say what business you are in, what exactly do we mean? We mean what is the precise and specific problem that you are solving? You see, the industry you are in does not determine your business strategy, the vision of your organization, or the business approach. It is the understanding of the precise and specific problem that you're solving that determines these things. For example, two restaurants that are operating in the hospitality industry might be serving customers here and there. But the reality is, if one sells cheap fast food and the other one sells gourmet fine dining, it is understandable that their strategy and operations will be totally different. Why? Because they know that they are serving two specific customers. They know what business they are in. It is important for you to know what precise problem that you are solving. Because once you are clear about it, you'll be able to deliver your solution in a much more effective way to the right client. The ignorance of this particular knowledge will mean that you are unsure about the direction of your organization, about the vision and the mission and your goals. This will ultimately affect your business, it will affect the clients that you deal with, and then you might probably end up failing in business. So we want you to find out exactly what business you are in. Join us right now as we hit the streets of London and find out from business owners and business professionals exactly what business they are in. What business are you in? What problem can you say you're solving? Well, I'm doing mostly repairs of the phones that have been broken, computers and all that. So um, most of the problems that we solve, we try to help people that break their phones and their laptops or whatever it is. Um. I know about KYC, of course, when you know about your customer, so you can make your business very successful, of course. If you don't know about psyche of customer and they come to you and you are, uh, you are doing whatever you want and they are not comfortable with you. So, of course, you can't run your any kind of business. They are small or big. So, of course, it's must for you. Hello and welcome to our latest business profile. Today we're in the East End of London where we're meeting the team behind Whopping Sourdough, a family of artisan bakers who are using their innovation and their love of good food to meet a growing need in the local market. So let's meet them now and find out a bit more about their inspiring story. The company is run by Robin and his family, a tight-knit team of bread lovers who work together to produce healthy, delicious breads in a range of flavours and textures. Robin is the one who makes the bread, with an industrial oven installed in his converted home kitchen. He and his wife, Claire, have six children. The children, along with Claire, help to run the company's stores in markets and supermarket chains across London. But the business we do is making sourdough breads, um, which Robin makes the bread, um, and then the, the role to sell in it kind of fell with me. We didn't deliberately start out to do one or the other. If it's a nice sunny day, you get lots of people come in and they'll sit and eat outside. Fridays is a very busy day for us. There's lots of office workers here who will buy bread for the weekend. So that, that's kind of built up over the year that we've, we've been here, where we get more customers buying bread for the weekend. Um, so Fridays are a very good day for us. Saturdays, we have lots of locals who live in Wapping who buy bread from us as well. Robin says the unique aspect of their bread is the rich flavour. He tells me about the fermentation process and how he allows the flavours to develop over hours and sometimes even days. 
All it is, it literally is flour and salt and water. What you can smell um, is the, there's a, a wild yeast culture in there because in wheat, there's actually latent in the wheat is um, uh, yeast. Mm. Um, when you ferment flour, basically you make a paste of flour and water, um, you let it ferment and you will get alcohol formed. If I leave this, mm. it will all be um, starch is eaten up um, by the yeast, that's what makes it rise. The bubbles you get are carbon dioxide, it's a living being, and there's also a bacteria culture in there as well. Mm. Um, and it will form alcohol on the top, you'll get hooch, is what they call it, and yeah. you, you can taste it so you'll smell the alcohol as well. And it, uh, kind of the trick in sourdough is to know when to start making bread. Robin has been making bread for 10 years as a passion. I had my own sourdough culture, and I used to make loads of it and I gave it away to lots of people. Um, people were always trying to pay for me and I started at first doing uh, for our local church, selling bread for charity and then started doing a few for myself while I was still working. I used to be a social worker and I wanted to leave. But it wasn't until 2011 when an amazing opportunity opened the door for him to pursue his hobby as a business. Whopping Sourdough was a supplier of bread to the 2012 Olympic Village and its sponsors. An amazing highlight for a growing company that has since been in the press numerous times. Uh, it was about January 2012 that had been offered contracts to supply bread for the Athletes Village um, where um, all the athletes would eat every day and for the corporate suite next door where sponsors of the Olympic Games had their corporate entertainment every night so I did different kinds of bread for you. Now, Whopping Sourdough is known and loved by locals, with many often making special requests. Robin says he celebrates the fact that they offer healthier bread alternatives, with all of their loaves, pizzas, breadsticks and other products being completely free of nuts, fats, dairy products and sugar. Okay, thank you for watching this segment. Stay tuned where we're going to sit down and talk more with Robin about what business he's in and how he's meeting the needs in his local market. Thank you. Coming up on Business Intelligence, I sit down with Robin and delve into the heart and belly of Robin Sourdough and find out more about what business they're in and how they've tailored their solution to solve a particular problem. Hello, welcome back to Business Intelligence. We've had a look around Whopping Sourdough's home bakery and now we're going to sit down with the founder and owner, Robin Weeks, and talk more, a bit more about the business. So Robin, thank you for showing me around. You're it's welcome. a beautiful place. You clearly do you know, a lot of amazing work here. Thank you. Um, so now I just want to sit, you know, sit down and talk about the topic of this episode. Sure. We're talking today about what business are you in? Yeah. Basically the fact that business is about solving a problem. And mm -hmm. so when you, as you, you know, embark on uh, your endeavor sure. as an entrepreneur, you need to know specifically what problem it is you're solving yeah. and who needs that that solution okay. that you're providing in order to place yourselves and you know deliver your um, your solution properly sure. so you know can I ask whopping mm. sourdough what problem do you think you're solving or what you know uh, people call it a gap in the market mm. um, what need do you think you're meeting sure I think um, the problem or need that we're meeting is um, uh, providing people with fresh bread fresh real bread mm. um, that you cannot buy even um, in Waitrose, which is our only local supermarket, mm. which has a artisan bakery supposedly inside, it's not fresh bread and it's not real bread. I make um, I make uh, traditional bread with just flour, salt, and water. Mm -hmm. And there is a market. Um, there are people, customers, um, who want that and won't take any compromise on that. Um, and there is nowhere else. There is a, another. There is a bakery in Wapping. Um, which makes um, your traditional white sliced loaf, um, but I don't think that affects our market at all. So I think we're 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 filling something that simply isn't there. You cannot buy real bread anywhere else, probably within, within a, a two or three mile radius. I would think, and mm. going some ways a lot further. Mm. So. Okay, yeah. great. And so, so you said that your customers they like um, fresh bread, yeah. essentially yeah. healthy bread. You, you know, yeah. you, you keep talking about how you only use flour, yeah. salt, yeah. and water. Sure. So very organic, very healthy, yeah. very natural. Um, so you know, I suppose is that an important part of what you do? It does knowing you know that that's what your customers are looking for. Does that influence your choices? It does. Uh, it, it's um, 
it probably it came originally from my own personal, um, I, I suppose, <laughs> values on food and, and what you're buying and products. And um, I'm more than happy to buy something of quality. If I went to a restaurant and um, paid £50 and I had a stunning meal, I would be happy. Mm. If I go along and I pay £5 and it's not what they say it is and it's not good, I'll be frustrated. So one of my real bugbears is, is for example, going to supermarkets when things are packaged up to be certain products and they're not that. And my firm commitment is to try and do something really, really well. I'd only do something that I'm really good at and to give you, the customer, that as at least as good as anybody else can be. I hope it's better. Yeah. But yeah. but um, so and I think that there's I think there's a gap for that in any product really. I mean I I think you could if you could decide almost anything. I'm going to make bacon sandwiches. If you make the best bacon sandwich, mm. people will come and buy it. If you make mm. the best cup of coffee and you mm. don't scrimp on that. So I think going back a bit to the need um, and the customers, that the, 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 there are definitely a big customer, not just for bread, I mean I think it happens to be in a way that we've chosen bread, but I, I do th think, um, I think as long as it's a, a product people will buy, um, a common product, bread obviously is and it's been there for forever and so, it will carry on to be forever, yeah. is um, I, I think that's the gap really, rather than bread if you like, so fresh bread, there is a product, but I think if I... I did. I think if I opened a coffee shop here or, or, for, or a restaurant, if you're, what you're providing is as good and, and you're giving people what they expect, I, I think you would be successful. I think there'd be a gap in that market mm. because I'm forever looking around. London is full of places to eat and, yeah. and, and you go around forever disappointed, I find, in what you're being given or what it says on the tin. Mm. So, mm. But I'm fussy. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a lot of other fussy people out there as well. So. There are. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So in the same way that you say, you know, you would be willing, you would be willing to pay mm. more money yeah. um, for a good quality meal sure. than pay less for something that, yeah. you know, you'd be disappointed in. Yeah. You know, in the same way, presumably, you would want customers who also appreciate good quality um, and you would tailor your solution and tailor your, your marketing and the way, you know, where you place yourselves to meet those people. Yeah. Um, uh, can you, you know, what are some of the places that, you know, you've... Uh, or what are some of the choices that have led you to, you know, on that basis? Um, I think responding to customers. So when I uh, first started selling bread, I, I, I was probably limited, probably by my own kind of um, traditions and cultural brands. So I would stick to wholemeal and seeded and white bread and traditional. Um, but um, one of our markets in Chelsea, um, we had a few, quite a few customers came up and saying they would like to try kamut, which is an ancient Egyptian wheat. Um, or spelt flour, which is an old British wheat, mm. um, or have you tried olive bread? And um, so I would, on those customer demands, start making it and then realise there's actually a market of people who are looking for those products. Yeah. Um, I think also is um, probably the majority of our customers are continental, I mean by that Italian, French, um, quite a few Polish. Um, if people where traditionally in their countries they have real bread on uh, you know and, and they're, they're traditionally their families and people still make it there yeah and it's something that doesn't exist here um, so that realizing that those people want something different I think also then developing and realizing actually the way they eat their bread is completely different from us and so instead of making a sandwich that's all you do with make sandwich and occasionally put some marmite on toast is mm. actually you know you have it with a meal it's seen as, as, as a different, you know, a part of your meal. Yeah. And it's changed the way I've eaten it as well and enjoying it more and appreciating it. So I think is, um, especially when you're in such diverse places, as London, your market, I mean, it, it's going to be different. But here, certainly in London, it's ever changing. I mean, in the population where you live, people are coming and going all the time. And it, and it does. So it's, it's looking at those small things. I mean, what's happened here locally? So we over in Chelsea, but we're here in Wapping. And um, I'll find is that I do make pizzas here, sourdough pizzas. Mm. Um, they haven't sold so well over in Chelsea, but here I, I can, you know, sell as many as I can make. So, you know, it's, it's looking to different customers. <laughs>